Hello and welcome to another episode of T4 Tips, Tricks, Toys, Tools for the Command Line for our users and uh, other fans of the Command Line. We um, have been at this for a couple of weeks now. I opened with the first quick overview and then we spent three episodes customizing Bash and making it nicer. And today I want to go a step further to something a bit more esoteric than Bash that may, not, that may be new to, to some of you uh, and that hopefully some of you will find enticing. I use this all the time. It's a thing called Bayobu which its author calls a text-based window manager. We'll see a little bit of that in a second. It wraps around two um, underlying programs called GNU Screen and Tmux, um, defaults to Tmux. Uh, Screen was an older one, and it's really very useful um, in text-based settings uh, when you FSH out to other machines or in a normal terminal. So I use it on laptop and desktop as well as on, <coughs> on remote machines. Um, this is... Uh, a screenshot of his website, highly recommended, um, very detailed, um, but quite impressive 10 minute video where a lot of the commands are shown that goes further than what we're going to do here today. But before I launch it, I'm just going to, in a um, Docker session that I had set up here and, and, and prepared, just update it. It's just a very default a standard container, our base here. I just installed um, Biobu and will fire it up now for the first time. Uh, just to show you how it reacts on an uncustomized uh, system where it doesn't see yet a Bioba directory with customizations or settings uh, in the user directory. So first time we bring it up, it actually you know says hello to you and says that you have two add-on commands, enable and disable, to automate launch of Bioba when you log into a machine. I don't usually do that. Uh, this, I think, is just a bitly link to the site that I just showed you. But notice the other thing. The screen immediately changed and we got a status bar with date, disk usage, RAM, um, uh, number of cores and clock speed they're running at, machine load, how long since it's re rebooted, and a counter for the windows. We'll see that change. Because the Docker container is Debian, it also tells us that we're running Debian unstably. That's not unhelpful because you may be SSHing out to a Red Hat box as well. And then you immediately see that just how we sometimes reflect the machine name in the, uh, in the prompt. Um, one thing that's um, uh, very important, very fundamental is Bayobu as a text-based program uh, receives instructions from the keyboard, especially the key commands, and a lot of it happens after a particular prefix. Uh, F12 runs the prefix, so if I now hit F12 followed by a C, I now have myself a second uh, session, session 0 and session 1. Uh, F12P goes back to the previous one, there are other commands for that as well. Um, this defaults to... Um, I think control A or control B under Tmux, I overlaid it so that uh, it is triggered by the back tick. It conflicts a little bit with Markdown, but it's not a bad compromise, I find, because it's easily reachable in the keyboard. Uh, you can change that, however, and Bayobo tells you how. If I hit another command that has particular meaning, control A, as we spoke about last week uh, for Bash, it jumps to the um, beginning of a, of a line as well, uh, similar to control E jumping to the end. If I hit this one now, for a first time where you'll be notices and then tells me, oh, you typed control A. Do you want this as an Emacs mode or do you want this in screen mode? And then you can select a particular feature. So if I now select uh, A, um, screen mode, now control A followed by C gets me a new session, which previously the F12 did. But I'll show you how I do that on my session, uh, on my machine in just a, in just a um, second. So I think for now we can get out of this Docker container um, um, I'm just explicitly exiting out of these sessions. Um, so now uh, I'm back on my machine. And if on my machine I say Bayobu because I usually have long running ones, you'll see that I have actually multiple here. In session zero, I typically do Debian packaging work and what have you, and the next one has an Emacs session, but I don't really want that um, to rework on this one. So I'm just uh, going to detach this one now and get out of it. And that just in passing already showed you the first, the first big trick that one can uh, suspend and resume particular sessions. But I will start with a, with a fresh one in just a, in just a second. So we just, um, I just showed you that, you know, Biobo starts that. And I'm going to pretend now um, that it's a new, new session. We don't have a particular run one running. So for that, I just say Biobo new. And then we get a, a, a fresh one that looks pretty much like what we had in the uh, Docker container just a second ago. But it now shows Ubuntu in 2004 because I'm outside Docker. I'm in on my normal on my normal machine. Uh, one could also have um, have set Bayobu screen, then the prompt looks a little different. I think this is a full default that one now gets here that isn't customized, but I don't use um, 
that all that much because I um, um, use tmux, which is equivalent to the variable tmux, so you can just say variable um, itself. Again, here I'm cheating now and I'm saying new to get a new fresh session. You don't have to do that when it's your first session or then it's, then it's uh, redundant. Um, so that's the session we're going to work with. So what can you do in this session? Um, a very helpful key is Shift F1 because it uh, gives you a paginated list of a reminder, basically a, a cheat sheet of all the various commands that are in there. And we're probably not going to hit all of them today or next week, but it's a good, it's a good lookup. Uh, similarly, there's a menu here that you get into with F9, which then greets you. F9 uh, followed by return gives you the same help page that we just had. Um, Toggle status notifications gives you a simple menu where you can turn on even more things in the status bar. I typically run these windows full width, so I have a bit more room there. So you can see you put your battery um, type in there or disk usage, uh, easy to cost, uh, how fast your fan runs and uh, lots of lots of different things. I think I customized uh, this very little and it's mostly the, de the default. And here's another option to change the um, uh, meta key away from f12 or control or control a um, but i'm not using that either so that was uh, f1 and f9 i've already shown you control c for a new command for new windows and now i have two of them um, another nice one is uh, prefix uh, now i'm a bit confused because my prefix no longer works did i just uh, oh uh, i have an idea I think I was still in demo mode. Um, no, that's um, really weird. Oh, I'm just forgetful. Uh, my apologies for that. So it's uh, control capital A, not control lowercase a. So I can call this one now bash, or uh, I could call this one work and uh, on play if you wish so there's three uh, windows now and we can control between them um, with alt left and right um, so cursor keys as well as alt key um, as well as the normal prefix key and p and n um, so there's often several commands so that that we just showed in that demo so those are some very uh, first ones for just having multiple sessions within the same screen but there's more um, a particularly powerful feature is that we with control f2 can split a screen into two that of course gets more important when you have a full screen and do it full screen this way here i'm just saving a little bit of, of screen real estate um, control f2 does a vertical split if I do control F2 again, now I have a vertical split within the currently active session. Similarly, shift F2 does a horizontal split. So now I have four. Um, something that's actually really nice then is related. Shift 8 um, rotates through a pre-selected arrangement um, for the number of splits that you currently have. So for four, I could have, for example, this display of four equal sized ones four equal size vertical ones, horizontal ones, or um, combo displays with one large and a couple of smaller ones. This is really nice if you want to run a log, for example, in one of the sub windows. Once you have sub panes, these are called within a window, uh, shift 11 jumps out. So we just got the fourth one here. I can actually show that and maybe turn something on that barely works at this size. And then we zoom out and get the full one. Um, so that's actually pretty um, nice as well. Otherwise, a um, um, really nice feature is um, that you can detach and reattach. So, if, for example, now if I use the meta key backtick in my case and just say Control D, and I would just you know I'm done with it. I don't want this anymore. I want the cursor back or something, whatever. If I then go back into um, this session, in this particular case now it'll tell me. Um, that uh, I have a choice between different sessions because I was practicing a little here and had multiple ones there as well. If you have only one last one running, it will only get back to that one. But recall, we were out of the session, now we're back in the session at the exact same spot where we were um, not that long ago. So that's really helpful too. Similarly, I could, you know, just 
destroy the entire terminal. Uh, Ubuntu even warns me, is that really what you wanted? And then go back into Bayobu. And um, again, the one that I was in was the, the second one in that list. And I immediately get the session back that we had. So the window manager for text-based windows or the session multiplexer, as they're being called, are stateful. It's extremely powerful because you can be working remotely on another machine. The connection goes down and the program keeps running. By the same token, <coughs> I could, for example, in the main session now have R here, load a particular program, run a super long compilation, and R will keep running. I mean, I'm just keeping a prompt here, but I can now detach, go out of there, later, later reconnect, and I'm back exactly where I was. And the R session is not interrupted from the loss of network or control terminal. Very, very powerful. Um, with that, uh, on my main session, I often arrange particular screens for particular um, purposes. So, you know, I tend to work on packages for work in one particular corner or set of windows for Debian and others, look at mail in another one, and uh, um, you can just customize and arrange your work that way, uh, any way you, you please. But you're always quite powerful that way. <coughs> so I had mentioned that... Um, I had overwrote uh, this away from the default to the back tick, and I am doing it this way. There's three more lines in the actual file here that I didn't show here because they, they commented out. These are really the ones that matter, and I got that from somewhere on the uh, on the internet a long while ago. I think I needed to change it once because the terminal implementation got updated, but I've been using Bayobo for maybe 10 years or year longer, and I've uh, stuck with the same keys and the same override. Um, that's all that uh, I had for today as a basic intro to Bayobu. Maybe we'll do a little bit more uh, next week um, for also comparing sessions, just how we had uh, compared panes and, uh, and windows in here. Uh, if there are other topics that you'd like to see, just uh, go to the T4 GitHub repo, open an issue and, and bring it up. And with good luck, I'll do that again next uh, Sunday. So this is the aforementioned series resource of the GitHub repository. Um, uh, as mentioned, I'll give a talk on Friday, trying to talk for an hour about RCPP in view of the um, um, our finance conference that's not going to take place in 2020 with all COVID-19 uh, uh, events going on, um, sadly. And that's basically all that I had. Uh, last closing slides again, a couple of links to other resources, my addresses, and uh, the T4 uh, repo for the series. That was all. Hope you find Bayobu uh, interesting at least. Uh, watch the video by, um, by the creator and uh, um, give it a try. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon.